previously on the Judds. So it's been 10 years and I'm going on tour with my mom. Is it going to help her? Is it going to help me? Or is it going to absolutely destroy our relationship? No, I just told him what a joy you've been. Huh. Ted is like our life coach. I, I honestly don't know where we'd be. Hi, honey. Hi, honey. Getting to know Cactus, and so I'm all of a sudden thrust into this whole new dynamic of how do you date at our age? Not even the biggest rock tours do this to this capacity, this many shows in a row. I'm concerned. I wanted a connection with my mom, and she said to me not too long ago, I'm going through a very life changing time. So I had both agony and ecstasy about the tour. My first memory. A man was trying to sexually abuse me, but I never told anybody. I never told Winona. Nobody knows my innermost secrets. The mother-daughter relationship is the most complex relationship in the universe. We're both such wild cards, and yet there is such a bond. There's always that potential for Winona and I to kill each other. I love this woman so much, and I'm so passionate about still believing that our relationship can heal. And when I said yes for this tour, I almost had a panic attack. Is it going to help her? Is it going to help me? Or is it going to absolutely destroy our relationship? Something happened on stage that kind of uh, got my attention. I know it's not good. I mean, it's visceral. I can feel a heaviness in my whole body right now. I don't know if anybody else saw it, but man, it scares me. and I are very close companions. And growing up, I was her greatest supporter. I was her spouse oftentimes, and yet she didn't have a mate, so I was it. So it be we became very enmeshed to the point of I didn't know where I ended, and she began. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm I'm her <laughs> I just keep reminding myself she's just kind of out there by herself sometimes, as she has been for a long time. I saw something on her face tonight that I've never seen. I saw her vulnerability. I feel like I, I know my mother. And one of the things I know for a fact is that something is really going on. I knew before I even stepped foot on the bus, maybe while I was packing, I knew that right now I'm letting go of stuff. I, I'm letting go of my emotional baggage. So I get in the bus and it's just me and you know, we're in a different city every night, and this stuff started coming up because of Winona. And I, I tried to cover it from her. It just broke me wide open, and I didn't like what I saw, and it was scary and dark, and I didn't know how far down I was going to go. I grew up in a family of secrets. So horrific, so shameful, it affects everything. I've withheld a whole lot of stuff. In fact, nobody knows my innermost secrets, but there's something emotionally unsolved. Naomi called, and she was pretty upset and wanted to share what she was feeling, what, what's coming up for her. I trust Carrie. And that's a good, good feeling for me. She's been our manager for 20 years now. She's got a lot of personal experience. And uh, this gal's the vault. Oh, 
goodness. All right. I will be. It's interesting that someone can look normal on the outside and be in such distress on the inside. When we started doing this show, I knew that um, I was making a huge commitment, and of course I was excited to go back on the tour and sing with Y and all that kind of stuff, but uh, I was really scared because I know that um, I've hit a point in my life where I'm 65, and um, I can't keep stuff repressed and down anymore, so. My whole life, I've tried to be strong and shove it, you know? My first memory was of being sexually abused by a relative. And I told Ted that a few years ago, and he just about fell off his chair. Uh, but then when he asked me why I hadn't ever told my mother, that's when I hit the wall, and I finally have acknowledged that I've never, I've always forgiven her and sort of covered for her, if you will. And now I realize that my mother doesn't love me. When I was pregnant, mom never said a word to me. I was 17 and a half, and she told me I, I couldn't stay there. She didn't say, well, let's talk about it. I mean, I could never remember her saying, I love you, never. That's a lot of information and sadness to carry around. That you've been carrying around your whole life. Let me let me ask you this, and I, I'm just wondering. I mean, I know for me, my experience with my parents when I finally got to see them be human, it, it was a very powerful thing for me. And why is going through her own stuff right now? Well, I mean, maybe you two can help each other. Maybe if she got to see this, I don't want her to no, know. I really don't. Why not? Um, because that's one of your goals for the show. I know it's scary, but I don't want Winona and Ashley to know because they think, think I'm Superwoman. And you can't hold up the world. That's not your job. I just think, you know, when we sat down and talked about your goals and why we decided to do this, you know, one of the things that was important to you and to why was that it, it make your relationship better. If she got to sit here and listen to how real you're being, I think it would blow her heart wide open. To be able to understand what you're what you're struggling with. I can't I can't go in there. You're afraid she can't handle it? Well, here's what I know about Winona, and maybe you haven't seen her in this capacity, but Winona has an incredible heart, and she is a strong woman. She's stronger than you might think. And part of me just feels like you're on two separate buses living two separate things when really, I don't know, this was supposed to bring you together. I think it's a unique opportunity, something to think about and what that might look like. I really tried to encourage Naomi to, to talk to Wynonna about what's going on with her because I think it would change her life. In sharing all of the pain and everything that she's going through, I heard her say she is in one of the saddest places she's ever been in her life. I really tried to encourage Naomi to, to talk to Winona about what's going on with her because I think it would be a game changer for their relationship, for Winona to see the vulnerability, the fear, and the challenges. Because I think if she saw her mother step out and be that emotional, I think it would change her life. I grew up in a family of secrets. My mother was uh, what we call a refrigerator mom, very cold. And my mom never talked about her childhood. Never, 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 never. I had never met my grandfather. I'd never seen a picture of him. My mom's dad, where, what happened to him? Where was he? Nothing made sense. I've never been around people that 
take care of each other and look out for each other. My whole life I've longed for that connection, that family. We're playing this big tour and yet I needed to go to the Hard Rock to support you know, my love. I needed to be there for him. He's there for me. Who is it? It's a very important uh, dressing room in here. <laughs> May we come in? Oh, what? my God. Hi. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> Look at his here. What are you doing, honey? Honey, I'm doing all I can. I've known Cactus since I was 18 years old. His group, <laughs> Hobby 101, opened for Mom and Me. So this has been quite a journey. He's a joy in my life that I never thought I would find again. Are we having a good time so far this evening? Let's hear it one time for Highway 101. But tonight, I have a very dear, dear friend of mine here tonight. Who's, who's more than my dear friend. My sweetie is here. <laughs> and I dedicate this to her. You know, I love men. I've always been attracted to the ones that are unavailable, you know, emotionally. Because in my family, I did not have a lot of experience with what that looks like from a father figure. I'm drawn to the unhealthy relationship I had with my dad. I didn't understand, you know, what a really healthy relationship looked like. I have married men who are like my dad. They're physically there, but they're not available to me emotionally. So I would pick people who were addicts, um, people who had agendas, ulterior motives. Very trusting, I was very trusting and very, very naive. I feel like this relationship has a chance because there are all these new tools I have that take me away from my insecurities, doubts, and fears. So you know what we should do? We should go over what's going on in the next 24 hours so I can know when to be lover, fighter, friend, shero. So right now we're going to go to a gun range. Leave as soon as you're ready. It's very cold out, so... so you'll, be warm, you'll be warm for the next 30 layers. minutes. And then have, we can have lunch with your mom on her bus. Okay. Is that just a me and mom thing, or is Pop going to be a, there? That's just a you and a mom thing. I know this just sounds really corny, but I think I really need this. I was supposed to read this every day. Today's message is called a fountain of love, and that's what we are. You've had enough of human love, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> was that a question for me? No, it doesn't say you have to keep and okay. No answer. Enough guys wooing you with Elvis impersonator yes. sincerity. Oh my yes. god. Enough tabloids telling you that true love is just a diet away. Oh. I don't know who writes this stuff. Wait, it's gonna get good. It really said. Don't you need a fountain of love that won't run dry? So come thirsty. That is your message for today. Now go out there and be a blessing with a gun. <laughs> Shoot the enemy the right in the kahunis. Shoot him right in the kahunis. What? I'm not the target, just FYI. I asked to start this tour in Florida, but no. We're going to go to a blizzard. Oh, can you? You know, I don't know how to text. Can I get you to check my messages? People still text me on my on phone. On your phone? Yeah. Is it in the back? Yeah, they don't... No, I don't use a cell phone. If you'll just bring it up here and show me how to delete. I've got eight text messages. Eight? I'm Brandy. I'm Naomi's personal assistant. 
I think I have a very um, unique view of Naomi and Winona because I'm very new to this team. Most of the people out here who are working with us have been with Y for many years. Some of them have been with them since they were both together the first time. What I do know is that I see two women who are working very hard to get healthy. From what I've heard, they weren't so healthy in the past. So there's certain things I can't tell you. What do you mean? I'm doing things on the side when you're not around. What are you talking about? I just don't know if you're okay or not. I'm really scared for her. What would be the right thing in your mind to do? Are you suggesting I invite my mom to the Louisville show? There are no words to describe the cold. So I called Y and I said, maybe this isn't such a great idea to go outside to a gun range. But she really wanted to go. Hi. So here we are in a, in a darn blizzard. You know, what can you do? OK. Oh, I know. Let's go shoot some skeet. Let's go to a gun range. Get away Honey, from I me. have on snow boots, okay? <laughs> you do not. Get away from me. I'm taking everybody out. Get out there, honey. Except people, you know? Except people. Welcome. This is Hi, how are you doing? Manly, manly man stuff. I'm Bill. Frozen Tundra. I hope you're ready for some outdoors. I was born for outdoors. Well, come on back. This is a 22 caliber rifle. Do you have anything in pink? <laughs> you know, Mom. the pink version that we they had actually this do was have taken pink. out just a little, little bit ago. Yeah, That's your John Wayne gun right there. This is a more John Wayne gun. I want a John Wayne gun. That's correct. That's what I want. OK. Yeah, looks Very good. cute little bullets. How yeah. cute is that? Yeah, they are. OK, sugar babe, we Here need we food tonight. I'll clean it, cook it, you Pull. shoot it. Oh! Ready. I'm ready. I was born ready. Here we Pull. go. Give it a shot here for fun. Are you going to do the safety for me? I already did it. Open both your eyes. Pull. You missed. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not leaving until I get it. She's very competitive. Pull. No. Oh, we waited too long. We waited too, too long. Too quick. Hey, gummit. Oh! 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 <laughs> that makes me crazy. OK. You want to shoot something. Yeah. Ted's mom's turn. And I'm ready to have some fun. OK, that's going to come. I got to beat Y. Two eyes open and move right across. Follow the bird. Oh! It's a hit. You got Gee, a piece off of it, that's a victory. This car, Annie. I did it! I did really, it. really, really hit it. He did it. He's being nice. All right. He's being nice. Good job. Oh. 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 What? <laughs> Why shouldn't you? I do now. Good. It's quite the turn you on. Might need another lighter. I'll get one in here. Everything works around here. It has anymore. wax on the end. I can see it. Huh? Take the wax off the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, Scarlett, we need to get you some of these. Hi. Look. Can that my is, child play with your child? Put those on? We're visiting. Yeah. Hi, Scarlett. Is that Teddy Bear? My child's name is Ted. Middle initial E. Last name Bear. Looky, looky, looky. That was really fun. I could totally get into that. How are you doing, kiddo? I'm really tired. Are you? I slept. I mean, we did not leave the bus. I slept six hours yesterday. Why? I sang really hard at rehearsals because I wanted to see how... It's like when you're working out, you really want to see how far you can go. Mm -hmm. And I overdid it. So how come you're not going to sound check today? See, so there's certain things I can't tell you. What do you mean? I'm doing things on the side when you're not around. What are you talking about? Like if you're at sound check, let's just say I'm doing something else. 
What are you doing? I don't understand, honey. That you don't need to know about. That are positive. Oh, okay, so you're okay. Oh, I'm fine. Okay. I'm doing love stuff. Okay. Don't scare me. Did I scare you? Well, I just don't know if you're okay or not. What do you mean? I don't understand what you mean, Mommy. Well, I mean, I'm concerned that you're not. Thank you. And um, your husband lovingly prepared it for you because he thought it was his. So he's already got the guacamole and sour cream right mixed there. in for me. Hmm. Want to say a little blessing? Yeah, yes. <sighs> Peace be on this bus. Peace within us. We realize that our outer circumstances are nothing compared to our inner experience. And I thank you. For my firstborn, for her gift, for the fact that she found her gift. And I ask that you give her the pride that she's shining for you. Amen. Okay. Yeah, I'm so hungry. <laughs> How are you holding up? I'm okay. I knew I needed to say something to my Nona acknowledging the truths of um, things that people have done to me. I don't want to have secrets with Wyatt and Ashley. I'm not going to, you know, tell them everything. But this stuff, they, they deserve to know. Right now, I've just been in a cold, dark winter. Because... You mean family stuff? Um, I'm gonna go over to my bus and start getting ready. Right now. Wait a minute, you didn't eat the rest of your thing. I'll eat it over there. I gotta start. Turn put, turn my hot rollers on and. But you didn't really say how you were. Another time. Just because you don't want to? Well, I gotta get in the mood for the show. Okay. Another time. Another time. Okay, honey. I'll see you out there. I love you. Love you too. Let's go next door. Just to our neighbor. I just feel a disconnect, like she's protecting herself. And that's okay. When she's ready to talk, she will. But she wasn't today, and so I'm not going to push it. She didn't seem open. Uh oh, let's go. I want her to know she's safe to talk to me. She tries to protect me. That's a mom. And I think she misses out on an opportunity to let me be there for her. Are you Naomi? Yeah. I kind of recognize it. Okay, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can tell me one of our songs. Just one. I can't believe da, anybody else had to know this guy. Well, I'm wearing funky monkey pajamas. Maybe they're afraid of me. My son. Hello. Honey, what kind of gun was it that I shot today? Uh, you shot a, a 20 gauge and a, and a 12 gauge. 12 gauge and a 20 gauge shotgun. Boy, oh boy, I thought about you the whole time. That's awesome. And your mamaw shot a gun, and you know those automatic clay pigeon throwers? Uh -huh. We're gonna have to get one. I know, I've been saying something about that. Well, that's awesome. Well, okay. But I just wanted to share that with you. That was my little field trip today. All right, where are you? We're in Minnesota. How's Haley? 
I think we're officially dating now. What makes it official? When she puts it on Facebook, and I was like, yes, okay, sweet. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> I love you, son. I love you, too. Bye. All right, bye. We are officially. But, but it's not like you have to put it on Facebook to actually be official about your That's dating. the way the kids are today. That means the whole world. Can so see. should I put it on Facebook that we're dating? <laughs> 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 yes, honey. <laughs> so how was mom and you? I'm a little low in energy because it was a disappointment. Really? She's yeah, she's not in a good space to talk. So what was the way was she not? She's just not open. Huh? Mm -mm. I'm trying not to take it personally, but she's just not ready. Well, what have you been doing, honey? I've been working on our song, girl. Come over here. I want to look at these words. Here's what I'm thinking. We are writing my mom a song, and it's pretty freaking weird. You know, it's one thing to open up your life to somebody personally, but to open it up personally and professionally is like, wait just a second. I have nowhere to run. <laughs> so it starts out with that we could work on this line. You call me on my birthday half an hour too early just to get me singing along. You You're lost like... me there. Okay. If you really saw how it is when she calls me on my birthday, this would make no we sense. We can't see me. Okay, we can't do Because when she does it, she does the whole thing about going into labor and how much she went through having me. <laughs> Do you see what Does I'm saying? Does that mean we have to get the word dilated into this? <laughs> we have to rhyme dialect? The point is, when she calls me on my birthday, it's about her. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> We're not like all the other families, honey. Because I've had the advantage of traveling, and when you live on a bus and you go to all 50 states, you get to look in the nooks and crannies. You go through the tiny towns to get to the big venues, and that has been one of the most, obviously educational, but one of the neatest things about my life. Okay, I might spend my whole per diem in here. That's a handy item. I need that by the end of the tour. You get some uh, preparation age to try on my face and say it's good for the ankles. Oh my god. You ever heard that? No, I haven't actually. It's a secret of all the Beverly Hills maidens. Ma'am, you look familiar. So do you. Didn't I date you? <laughs> oh, maybe. It's for you, Naomi. Yeah? Hot salt. Gonna recognize it. Okay, I'll give you a hundred bucks if you can tell me one of our songs. I just, I'm not good at songs, but okay. I remember watching you and your daughter. Just one. Ah, man, give me a brain. Da, 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 da. <laughs> I can't believe da, anybody else da, hasn't da, noticed yet. Da, da. Well, I'm wearing funky monkey pajamas. Maybe they're afraid of me. <laughs> it's interesting that the family of choice becomes the band, the crew. The fans. It, it's as if um, the stuff that I didn't get, that all these strangers, all these people who perhaps see something of themselves in us, that's when my life is as good as it gets. So, uh, what are we chatting about? Well, um, so I worry about Naomi's relationship with her mom, and uh, so I said, listen, uh, can we sit down with Ted and have a meeting and talk about this. Was there anything um, that you shared that Larry doesn't know about that you wanted to talk about now? Maybe stuff that I didn't know, stuff that I didn't hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> scary look on your face there. Um, <clears throat> well, let me check in with you and ask you how you feel about... I mean, I know I'm not very available to you because of my schedule. Are you okay? Yeah. If you're not ready to talk about it. I'm deflecting. I'm doing it again. That stuff that 
happen to you, and you can tell me anytime you want to. And it's, I don't want to put you in a situation where you got to start talking about that. So I don't, <clears throat> yeah. The one, the one thing that's on my mind, this is kind of a sideline, has to do with your mom. Because I lost my mom a little over a year ago, and I'm really scared for her that when she loses her mom, that she's going to feel like I do. I'd, I'd like to have one more phone call with her, you know. Wish I'd have been there more. Wish I had spent more time with her. But when somebody's gone, they're gone. You don't, you don't get a second chance. You don't get them back. And it doesn't matter what you say now, what you feel now. All that changes when they're gone. I mean, it just does. And I don't want us to, I hate to see that happen for you. But you know better than anybody that I'm the one that calls her. She's never called me. My mom didn't call me, but I knew that she loved me. Just the way she was raised, just who she was. Your mom, think about how she was raised. Oh, she's a survivor, and I've always respected her for that. There you go. That's worth a relationship and worth the phone call right there. The respect. It's a whole different thing, you know, me, when you do, you do the right thing so that you have no regrets without expecting something of equal measure to come back. Exactly. That's a different, it's a different way of being. It's like forgiveness. You don't forgive somebody for them. You do it for yourself. Yeah. I'm wondering if you understood what Larry said. Yeah. What, what was that? What's, what was the core message? I don't know what to do about this yet because... It's not about what to do about it because we're, we don't have to come to that answer yet. But what did, what's the message Larry wanted you to have? No matter what the relationship is with your mother, no matter what it is, that there's never a, another time once they're gone. What does this mean? Because this is my big dilemma. We've got a show, a show in Louisville. That would be the show for her. It's the closest show. Are you suggesting I invite my mom to the Louisville show? What would be the right thing in your mind to do? Run screaming into those woods. That's one option. Never be heard from again. My head is about to explode. I'm so full of this stuff now. I need a break. Okay. To be continued. So, have you decided to invite your mom? No, I did. You did? Yep. How you feel about that? Hmm, you can imagine. I'm terrified. Does this look too Twilight Zone, vampirish? Not with this outfit. With the with the red dress, it did. Yeah. Yeah. So, have you decided um, to invite your mom? No, I did. You did. Yep. Yeah. We haven't heard back. Nope. But uh, how you feel about that? Hmm. You can imagine. I'm terrified. I told you she would always ask why before Y shows. When are you going to introduce me in your show so I'll know I'll be ready to stand up? I don't know, with you being in the spotlight so much, I wonder if there, you know, I wonder if she craved some of it too. Oh, yeah. No, no question. And we were doing the Barbara Walter, Barbara Walter, you know, that she does that yearly thing about most fascinating or whatever. Um, she was doing us. <clears throat> My mom was standing behind Barbara Walter. She was visiting me at the farm. She stood behind Barbara Walter, and I'd say something, and she'd go, was it quite that way? And I was, I don't know, I just, it was horrible. I'm sure just people. Fortified. I know, just I'm sure people it. could That's see awful. it. That's <laughs> awful. People could see it on my face. But I finally had to, you know, ask her to get out of my own line. You know what I mean? Go ahead and just sit in the dressing room. 
Yeah. Okay, let's do it. I had a very judgmental mom, and I haven't contacted her in a while. It's our last encore tour, and it may be the last time that she gets the experience of seeing her daughter and her granddaughter together. So, are you ready? Am I ready? Yeah. No, not really. No, I'm pretty sad, actually. My understanding of my mother's relationship with her mom is a lot of giving love and taking it back. It's not a healthy relationship. Okay, well, go be a Wonder Woman. Okay, sweetheart. Love you. Love you, darling. I think Mother spent a lot of time in fear that she feels like she'll never, ever have a relationship with her mother. And Nana has done some very cruel things. And it's really sad. Really sad. I wasn't parented in all the ways that I would love to have been, but now as a mom, I'm gonna show up for my kids. Yeah. I'm ready. Having watched what she and her mother have gone through, I see her vulnerability. I see how fragile she feels, and I wanna save her and fix it. Mom didn't come to our concert. I feel rejected again. I feel sad. The fact that I've had counseling about it, acknowledge my sadness, my disappointment, um, my dashed hopes, I wish that that would take it away. But there's still a palpable sadness. And again, the older I get, the more I long to feel known. And all of us long and deserve to be known by our mothers. I'm so mad right now, Nana did not show up. I mean, that pisses me off. She still has to go out there in front of thousands of people and do a show. I, I can't even imagine. I'm so mad right now, Nana did not show up. My understanding of family is you show up, regardless. And you're missing an opportunity to see us for the last time. This is it, and you blew it. I mean, that pisses me off. She still has to go out there in front of thousands of people and, and do a show. I, I can't even imagine. Somewhere under all that I wasn't parented in all the ways that I would love to have been, but you can't close off your heart. So what I remind myself is that I can't make it the way that I would love it to be. Looking through my eyes.
guys. I want the world to be comfortable and predictable and secure. And I would love to have such a, a, a an easy relationship with my mom, but it's just not. And I have to let it go. I will use this event that hurt my feelings and disappointed me to be that extra little push when I have to be the mom. I'm just going to keep showing up for Winona and Ashley. It's so cold on this bus, this pond's is freezing. You don't take the green peppers off? Yeah. Not the yellow ones. I know you like banana peppers. She's very disappointed that she didn't come. That's a big deal. I've withheld a whole lot of stuff. You only have one childhood, but if you look back with informed adult eyes, mature eyes, with a few skills, you can understand and with it. That's what I'm trying to do. It's not over, it's just started. On the next episode of The Jets. You're not going to tell me what to do. No, I'm on your bus. She brings out the best and the worst in me. She can make me go from first gear to fourth gear in 0.3. Why won't you answer any of my questions? I don't like to talk about the past. It's almost like, okay, there's an elephant in the room. What's going on? Ashley's sending me her unedited manuscript for her autobiography. She said, Mom, can't comment or change anything. Oh, honey. How much can a mom take? Yeah.